know that mathematics is not as difficult as we perceive it. Imagine having a friend you love so dearly, but that friend keeps rejecting you. Would you love them the same? Well, no, I wouldn't. That's the same way mathematics feel. It can't keep forcing itself on you if you don't need it halfway. You've been together with mathematics the whole school career. Why not just love, embrace it, own it, enjoy it, and celebrate it? It will get so much easier. Hi everyone, so we are going to continue with linear programming and this time we are looking at the second part of linear programming where we have two variables involved meaning in one inequality we have both x and y and not the other way around where we only had x or we have y now we'll look at some examples here and then we take it from there so in this example i advise you always make sure that you read your question sometimes the reason that we fail is not because we don't know it's we don't read our questions to understand we read our questions to respond and in, if you don't understand something you actually don't give the right response so you want to understand what they're asking you to do in the first place and then you try to make sense out of it common sense. common sense okay now the question is saying shape the unwanted region of the following inequalities so what does that tell you it tells me i need to have a graph and i remember already just when i see unwanted region i must already remember from class linear programming unwanted region i should shape that so i want to have a graph and then i can choose which part of my graph which side of my graph is it to the left or to the right that i should shape so the first thing you want to do here is not quite to draw your two axes your x and y axis why because you don't really know your limits you want to know which part where which number should i end on my negative side of x and what where should i end on my positive side of x so i need to have an idea from reality remember we can't work with an inequality if we are drawing a graph we want to have an equation which makes it possible for us to have a graph so meaning i'm gonna say this is x plus y equal to four so if x plus y is equal to four i want now to have a graph that is going to be the equation or the graph for that equation to mx plus c so when you see all this i have a c somewhere constant and i have an mx and i have a y i must already know this is a straight line but i want to draw this graph so i'm going to need certain point we have two ways to solve this question you can decide on on certain points from your negative side of x and then you include the zero you go to the positive side of x and then you substitute in your equation or you could simply just find the where the graph cuts the x-axis and where the graph cuts the y-axis then you just connect by that i mean we find our intercept what are intercepts this is where the graph cuts your axis your x-axis and your y-axis to get the x-intercept you always let y to be zero so let y to be zero so that you can get to see where your graph is gonna cut the x-axis why are we letting y to be zero because remember in the previous video we said it's because we know that the line y equal to zero is just the x-axis that's why we are saying y will be zero on the x-axis that's how i know that it will cut the x-axis at that point so i now let y to be zero remember our equation is now x plus y equal to four so i'm gonna if i let y to be zero i have x plus zero equal to four so if I take 0 away, it's minus 0, minus 0. So I'm basically taking nothing from 4. So it means x is 4. That's where x axis. Then we go on to the y-intercept. The y-intercept, we just do the same thing that we did at the x-intercept. But this time, we let x to be 0. This time, we let x to be 0. If we let x to be zero in this equation we have zero 
plus y is equal to 4. Then we have, take out the, the 0, you know that I'm just going to have y equal to 4. Now I have a hint or an idea as to how I can label my axis. I'm now going to go back to drawing my graph. And then I can now say 1, 2, 3, 4. But I want to make sure I can at least include a number more than that or even two numbers so that I see if from there on, I know that I have more numbers. I just want to have that space so that I can be able to decide on my wanted and unwanted region. Then I come to decide, I obviously also need to have some values on the negative side. Remember, your scale should be the same. You can't make one centimeter here from zero to one and then from zero to negative one, I have two centimeters, please. We'll go. We we'll also do graphs so you can understand the scaling, but you have to make sure that the scale, the space between the points is the same. Now, you also want to include negative values on y. Then you must make sure I have at least a 4 there until 4 and beyond, just a bit. And I know that my graph should cut the y-axis at 4 and it should cut the x-axis the x at 4. So I'm just going to connect, take a straight edge or a ruler and then you draw through a straight line. Please don't do it freehand. You take a ruler and draw that to connect those two points so that you have a straight, a perfect straight line. Then I see that, okay, remember, it does not quite have to be so perfect, but I want to make to be neat. Because they say, sometimes they say, draw a sketch. They just want the sketch. But you want your things to look neat. You don't want the things to be dirty. Now, you have drawn your... If this inequality was strict, meaning no equal sign involved, I would have made this a broken line. But I made it a solid line because this inequality includes a, an equal sign from the previous examples. So it's very important. I'll put the, the, the links to the previous videos below in the description. Please, if you have not seen the previous videos, please go through and go check out so that you can start from the beginning and have a full understanding of the talk. I said we make it a solid line because of the equal sign, equal sign that is involved. Now we have our graph. We want now, remember, this is the graph, this is the, the equation for that line. But we are asked for the inequality. But we are going to be guided by the equation. So we now want to see, to see which part are we going to call our unwanted region, which is what we are going to shade. One way to do this would be to select a point on either side of my line. Meaning either on my right side of the line, by right I'm talking about from here going that side, or on the left side of the line, meaning from below the line going this side. So I want to choose a point, a certain point. Let's say we decide we are going to choose, this point will be 5, 5. Now, this, remember your coordinates. This is your point on the x-axis and this is your point on the y-axis. That's how your coordinate is. So you're just choosing a random point as long as I know it's exactly there. I could have decided to come and choose 4, 5 as well. Or more, if I had more numbers there, I would choose any point as long as it's on that side. Why do I need that point? I want to come and use that point in my inequality to see if it's my inequality is going to be true. I now chose a point, so I'm going to get rid of this just so that I can get some space to work on. I want to come back to your inequality x plus y is greater than or equal to 4 and substitute your point. Remember your x is 5 and your y is 5 and then you say this is 5 plus 5 is greater than or equal to 4. Your, fo your, your focus here is mainly on the just greater than. You don't quite care about the equal. But because you can have values that are more but they're not going to be equal. So I have 10 is greater than or equal to 4. Is 10 then you ask yourself again just like the previous examples. If you see that when you substitute your points in your inequality and you solve it and you conclude that what I got makes sense and it's true, then it means I can actually call that side my wanted region because it makes my inequality true. It's correct. So if this is true that this is bigger, then that is going to be your wanted region. So that's your, your wanted region. If that is my wanted region, then I'm going to shade my unwanted region will be this side. So that's going to be your unwanted region.
Now you find people asking you in class, are you done? Of course I'm done. How do I ask if I'm done if I know I was asked to shade the unwanted region? And I did shade the unwanted region. Whatever the method I used, I did end up shading the unwanted region. Then I'm done. So you should not be like you're just going, you're on a journey and you don't know where you're going. And that's where we have the mistake that we do in maths and we find things difficult and we start saying math is difficult. It's not difficult. You must solve, you must make sense out of the situation presented to you. You know that I want to shade my unwanted region. So how do I get that region and understand, understand the concept? So I've shaded my arm with the region. I'm done. Now, that's just one way of doing it. I have my own method or my own way of doing it. And I saw that it, it works quite well. What I actually do is I still do, do the same thing. One, find my Y intercept, find my X intercept, connect the two points so that I can see how my graph will look like. And then after I've drawn my graph, I then just look at that line and I Look at it like above that line, I'm going to be greater than it. And the ones below will be less than just because it's that side, it's greater. And then because I'm like increasing and then coming back, I'm decreasing. So I look at it as if it's less than. Then with that thinking in mind, I then go to the inequality. They're using a greater than or equal to are they using a less than. Whether it's less than or equal or just strictly less. I just foc I'm just focusing on the direction of the symbol. So if I see that they're talking about greater than, it means the greater than is that side, just, just like I, I explained earlier. Like this, I would know that this is less than, so less than is this, so this would be my wanted, so I would shade my unwanted, which would be the other side. In B, they're saying x plus 2y is greater than 6. Now we want to apply the same methodology. We want to find our x and y intercept. You could do that. Or you could choose points any random point but the easier way would be of course to just find your x and y intercept because you know that i'm just gonna let x to be zero substitute the x with zero to get the y intercept substitute the y with the zero to get the x intercept so i'm gonna let x to be zero remember i've changed this already to my to make it my equation so that i can work with an equation because remember i cannot draw a graph a line of an inequality because an inequality has many values so i want to have this as an equation so that it's possible for me to have a graph so i let x to be zero so it means when i see x i put zero so i have zero plus two y is equal to six if i take the zero away meaning i minus zero there minus zero there i have zero is gone because remember how you take away to the other side it becomes negative so but we don't have a negative so we're just subtracting it away so that we see that it's gone from here we have 2y is equal to 6. so if you have 2y is equal to 6 how do you solve we divide both sides by 2 both sides by 2 why are we doing that and math is just something that i need to understand i want to know that i want to know what the value of y is if x is zero that's what you are basically doing so if i know x is zero i simply go in my equation and put wherever i see x i put zero so if I put 0 where x is, I'm left with 2y equal to 6. Then I know I want, I want to solve for y because now it's possible because I only have one unknown. I can now get rid of 2. Now you find people making a mistake subtracting 2. We are not doing this to just play games. We are making sense. How can you just come and subtract it? You can't ever do that. If it's, it's, it's 2y, it means 2 times y. So to get it away, you want it away, you divide it by Two. Because if you say you are taking two from here, you are saying, I'm emphasizing on this because I've seen many people making these mistakes throughout algebra and other topics. If, if you have two y and you are telling me that two y is equal to six, I must minus two minus two. What you are going to tell me that you have is my two y minus two equal to four. That's what you are telling me you have. But then you are creating your own equation here. You are creating miracles here. You can't come and start doing magic here. You must make sense. So you can't do that because in algebra, when you were introduced to algebra, you were taught that I cannot subtract unlike terms. Unlike terms meaning if it's two y, I must have a number and a y there as well for me to be able to subtract them. So how are you going to continue there? So you can't do that. That is why that is very much impossible. So that is why we are going to divide because we know if we say 2y divided by 2, 
Then we know we can divide the 2 and the 2 because they are both numbers and 2 is divisible by 2. So I have 1 y. That is why I'm doing it so that 2 can go away. I'm going to have y is equal to 3. Then I am done. So I have my y. I see now the graph will cut the y axis at 3. 0. So I'm going to let y to be 0. If I let y to be 0, I'll have x will remain x plus 2y, which is 0, equal to 6. So, now I see that, okay, x plus 2 times 0 is equal to 6. But you know that 2 times 0, 2 times nothing is nothing. So I'm just going to have x, the nothing is gone, I have equal to 6. So it means my graph will cut the y-axis at 3 and it cuts the x-axis at 6. So that's, those are the numbers that I want to make sure are appearing on my graph so that I can see how my graph will look like. So let's draw our graph here. Remember, cutting the y-axis at y equal to 3 and x-axis at 6. So I have my y-axis and my x-axis. I want to make sure that my x-axis accommodates a 6, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I just plot my points, so I have y at 3 and x at 6. I want to take my ruler and connect these points. Make sure you do it so straight. Even though it's a, it's a, it's a sketch, I want to make sure that my sure that my line is very straight. Then I have drawn my graph. But the one mistake that I did here. Pause this video and try to figure out what mistake I have made. Then you come back. Let's continue. You must have realized that I did not use a broken line. Let's say it's strictly great and not equal. You have now drawn your graph. You have used your broken line because of that inequality. And then you now need to come and answer the question. You need to figure out my unwanted problem. Let's say you want to use the shorter method that I explained in the last example. And that is to just look at your line, then look at the above the graph to be like the greater than, and below the graph to be like the less than. Then you try and see what were you given, if that's what you have in mind. I was given a greater than. If it's greater than, then it means it's above the line. So that's your wanted Guys, just because we see our wanted here is above and here is also above, doesn't mean we always have it above. It's just a coincidence here. So we have our wanted region above, so we want to shade our unwanted region, and it's going to be here. That's one way or shorter way of looking at it. That's just a shorter way. I told you about the way where you can choose points. Here, let's say we choose a point here. This point and this point, I have negative 2, 0. That's the coordinate of this point. We're just choosing a random point on this side of the graph. We could choose that side as well. Just going down here because in the previous example, we chose something on that side. Now, if that is x and y, my inequality was x plus 2y should be greater than should be greater than 6. Now, I want to come and substitute my values and see if my inequality is going to be true. I'm going to say negative 2 plus 2, 0 is greater than 6. I simplify this. This is negative 2 plus 0 is greater than 6. It's just negative 2 plus nothing. It's just negative 2. And I copy down my, my symbol and then I have a 6. Then I ask myself, is negative 2 greater than 6? No. There's no way negative 2 would be greater than 6. So it's not true, so it's false, and that point was this side of the line, so that's your unwanted, because it made your inequality false. It's not true. So it means it's your unwanted. You don't want that because it's not true for that inequality. Can you see that our method actually worked? No magic, just sense. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.